Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Xenogears. Last time, our gears stopped moving and this guy is going to annihilate us. This time, no one else's gear is moving either. So, what is it exactly that we're going to do at this point? The response circuits. Well, I guess most of those characters did have response circuits on, or well, magnetic codes, which are upgraded response circuits. I think they're referring to something completely different, but oh well. It's only momentary, just long enough to erase you from the face of the Earth, except for the fact that they're floating in the sky, but enough of that. <laughs> oh yeah, so he was kind of working on that fusing of uh, you know, machine and uh, human there together. I guess he's kind of done that. At this rate, you already can't do anything. That's what a strange line. Oh, it's weird. So, how exactly are we going to, uh, Maria? Oh, so he's got an she's got an anti-jamming field on sides and so, so she can actually do something. She, she is the only one left. So we told her not to go out there, and now she's the only one who to go out there. I guess that makes sense from a, you know, a writing perspective. They seem to do that in a lot of uh, games, movies, anime, etc. But uh, yeah. Doesn't seem like the uh, father she uh, would remember, or at least the one that she is expecting him to be. Yeah, I guess it would be difficult to, you know, with the amount of respect and love that she has for her father, to go straight after him and, you know, attack him in that way. So then, we are hooped. What are you going to do, Fuzzball? What exactly could you possibly do? You're smaller than Maria, and you don't have a gear. Um, I'm going to get in trouble for this, but having faith in the heart of the cards is not going to help you. And she rolls away. She bounces and rolls. <laughs> You're actually going to go and try and stop her, I guess, but... That's kind of abrupt the way they cut off the music. Ah, there we go. This is where we saw Maria earlier. Up, uh, had that little cutscene there. And, Choo Choo, why are you all the way up there? How did you get up there? Did you bounce? How is that going to be no sweat? What's with this astronomically unintellectual? <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> because it, it's a choo-choo. Um, I think you kind of just said that you both are and aren't. <laughs> Oh, seriously, we're getting determined music. Yeah, this is going to go over real well. Um, I don't like your dialogue at all. <laughs> well, that would be a good idea, but how exactly are you going to do that? Why are you glowing? Game. Are you kidding me? <laughs> she grows for reasons unexplained. The thing that's sad is they actually do explain how this happens and why it happens. Not so directly, but it's... Yeah, somehow she managed to do this big transformation. Yeah. She's the only gear in the entire game who can restore HP um, in gear form with the spell without having to rely on accessories. She has no death blows. She has no special options. She doesn't use fuel. She can't charge. She can just defend and attack. 
And each of her attacks. Well, that was guarded, but we'll do a lot more than that. And unfortunately in this fight, Chushu is invulnerable, which just makes it all the more strange that this fuzzball is beating up a huge deal. But even though she can't do death blows, her normal attacks at this point are actually reasonably powerful. Now, because Choo Choo is her own gear, um, her stats actually, like, they scale from her character form to her gear form. And that being said, there's a way of manually increasing the amount of uh, stats that your, your characters can have. That being the case, you can technically make Choo Choo the most powerful uh, ground-based character, I think and specifically the most powerful gear in the entire game. I'm not going to do this because that takes too much effort and I don't like Choo Choo at all anyway, so... I wouldn't... I don't want to spend time building up a character to be decent when I already have characters that are better. Yeah, you've said that already. I... don't know how to... S I don't... I got no words for this. <laughs> this whole scene is just like... What the fuck? And she got the X'd out eyes. Yeah, she got hurt by getting knocked out. And she still gets experience, because why not? And she learns another spell, which I'll go over later. Anyway, Choo Choo won and then lost. Now, here we get um, some additional information about the Choo Choo. Now, I don't know if they mentioned this before, but the Choo Choo are, like they just mentioned here, a native species of this planet, and they used to be a lot larger. Not a young Rancar. No, that's one of those dragons we fought before. Intell intellect ast astronomically low, yeah, yeah, we know. You don't like them. Nobody else does anyway. Okay. This is where they mention it. Through genetic engineering, presumably by Solaris, they have been minimized in size so that they could not expand super large like this because that was, of course, as you can see with Choo Choo, probably a bad idea. Anyway, yeah, so these limiters, which is the genetic engineering they're talking about, was built into them, most likely by Solaris, and this one apparently had the removed when she was brought down to the surface by, uh, they say the wise men, but probably by wise men in general, or maybe one of the uh, sages a long time ago, who knows. Um, that sounds like a bad idea. Uh, she's not really... oh, Midori. I don't think they're actually related. Nothing game says that they're related. I think that's just like a, a Japanese thing. If you watch a lot of anime, there's a lot of like, uh, you know, someone older than you, an older friend is your big sister or whatever. It, it, it's a, a weird culture. Well, I guess it's not weird. It's a cultural thing. It, it's a difference. What? Well, yeah, he's over there. I don't get it. What are you, what are you talking about? Uh-uh, no. Not the scary thing. Oh! Well, how does that make any sense? He, he's right over there. Or at least that's what they've been telling us. And we get the determined music, which always gives me goosebumps. <laughs> Though, the scene probably didn't need to be this long and show her going up and down elevators and running downstairs and all this stuff, but, uh, oh well. We probably could have started the music and then gone straight to this one hallway into the main room, and that was it. There we go. I don't know why it's so dark in here, but, oh well. Sorry I'm late. Let's go. And again, it's a very strange stop to the music, and kind of strange. It doesn't actually stop, it kind of just plays really quietly in the background. It's kind of weird. 
Anyway, Seeds in, activated, and ready to go. Looks like Maria is going to uh, take the fight to the Ox Center. Well, she's going to take 17 and fight 18. Wonder if that's a Dragon Ball Z reference. It probably is. You, who are you? I don't know about that. So yeah, th this is where they finally go out and say it. He has been fused, uh, whether brain or whatever it is, into this gear. Um, you just called her stupid at the same time, but... How come every enemy wants to build a brighter future with one of the characters? How come that's, like, so commonly used as a trope in these games? It just seems kind of weird. I guess it kind of goes hand in hand with the fact that a lot of the, uh... Uh, the, the battles where, or the confrontations where this, stuff like that happens is between two people who tended to like each other in the past, or that were related, or are related, or whatever. Um, you're talking to a gear. Mm -hmm. Sure, why not? There we go. Anyway, this battle is not a, uh, a bait, you know, something super basic or anything like that. It's, uh, it's not super hard or anything, but if you check out Ether, she has nothing. If you check out Special Options, she has Missile Pod, which I won't be using because she sucks. Um, starting off the fight, let's go Booster. Uh, her gear kicks ass, it is super powerful, but at the same time, like, her magic stat's not great, her stat, and stuff like that. Yeah, her, she, even though she has no death blows herself, she does gain attack levels, and she does have, uh, death blows in gear form, just not in human form. And I mentioned this a few episodes back now, but, uh, if you do look, Maria is actually sitting on top of, uh, Seeb's end. She's not actually inside, so she is controlling uh, this gear, like I mentioned all those episodes ago, with kind of like a mental interface kind of deal. She's actually sitting right below kind of the T and the A on the attack there. That's about where she is. Anyway, her attacks are buff. And we're going to use her uh, combo here, Iron Break, because this does have a lot of damage. This guy has 12,000 or 13,000 HP. And he ain't lasting all that long. Um, I did equip the Seab Zen with uh, Magnetic Coats prior to this fight, which is probably why he keeps missing. But, uh, yeah, that's probably your best setup for this fight. Even with the basic stuff that she comes equipped with, which is like increased defense and healing, she'll be fine in this fight. No any, uh, problems. Oh, apparently he's not quite dead. Gravit Graviton Cannon. I'm sure that's a reference to something. Huh? Well, yeah, if you're coming to your senses, then we don't need to kill you. Might as well recruit. Um, by saying that, don't you kind of exist? Oh, so he was brainwashed, or at least he knew it was coming. He implanted a consciousness circuit in the Axen that would respond and resonate in the presence of Saibzen. And so, yeah, basically he left uh, a holographic message. So, yeah, he sent a whole bunch of data to the Saibzen, lost his body, and was fused with uh, the Axen against his will, most likely. But, uh... Yeah. So he's also kind of he set it in motion so that it would auto, the Cybzen would automatically shoot because he, I'm assuming, knew that Maria would not want to do it. 
and he uses this uh, attack, which obliterates the other gear. Father was kind of already dead. It was just a message. But, uh, yeah. And she gained some stats that I don't care about. And more importantly, we get the wizardry ring at probably the second most ideal time. The most ideal time would have been at the start of the game, but oh well. What that does is it allows you to learn death blows more easily. And we are very shortly going to get the ability to learn more death blows, which is why it's the second best time you could get it. Um, unfortunately, you get it a little too late, and I like the ability to get more than one, but uh, you don't get that until even later in the game. And the gate's back up. That's nice. Wouldn't he be Dr. Balthazar? Dr. Nikolai Balthazar? Oh, well. Yeah, we pretty much have to do that. Well, we've pretty much been doing that for the last uh, little bit now since the whole incident down at the Ethos headquarters. So, so Shivat has five gates. Solaris has three gates. All of Shivat's gates are located in their headquarters or in their city. So you can't get at them unless you somehow get in like Dominia did. And Solaris's are on the ground. Do we see a problem with Solaris's implementation here? Okay, so we can't do anything with that one. Don't know where the other two are. Well, we're kind of hooped then. Oh, well, um, Bart, I think we're, our plans are about to change. Let's, uh, let's go to Nissan. Now, if you remember a couple episodes back, we spoke with someone who said the secret royal treasure of Ave was an Omni Gear. Yes, sealed up by Roni Fatima many, many years ago. Uh, they haven't really talked about the timeline too much, but basically Roni, Fatima, and Queen Zephyr fought in the same war 500 years ago. So that's kind of the timeline that they're going with here. So yeah, th that Omni Gear has been down there for a long time. Can't leave Nissan to its fate, so we have to go there. Your ship has been equipped with an aerial module. So yeah, remember, this is the one that Bart found underneath the, the ground, somewhere under the uh, the castle there, I believe. And this one was a prototype, or was used a lot by uh, Solar or not Solaris, uh, Shavad, meaning that it was, I guess, compatible with this, uh, this module. So yeah, basically, we now have an airship. Just, just kind of out of nowhere. <laughs> And we get to take Marie along with us. Awesome. That sounds like a good idea. Well, that's nice of you, Faye. And we get a little, little dialogue box that says we became friends with Maria. Ah, Gaspar has returned. Oh, so that's the guy who trained them. Well, that'll be helpful. Got it. All right, let's go. However, we're not really going anywhere too quickly. There's a few things I need to do. Oh, you look kind of weird yourself. Makes sense. Do you guys have an Omni Gear and you didn't say anything? What do you mean it's moving? Why would it react to her? It's a matter of course. 
strange line. The girl doesn't intend to ride it, just like her. She knows it unconscious. Unconsci- That word. I can't speak. <laughs> Now, we may have forgotten who Sophia was, but I mentioned in a few episodes back, uh, remember that painting in the Nissan Cathedral? That was a picture of Sophia, the uh, mother of Nissan, the, uh, the former leader of that religion. Remember how she looked a lot like Ellie? Kind of seeing something here. Maybe, uh, you know, an ancestor long back. What do you mean you're not... All these indefinite pronouns are really frustrating. <laughs> and yes, he is going to go and take a look at our limiters, which are the things implanted into us uh, genetically by Solaris. So he removed part of the limiter to put into their genes, and yes, and then Choo Choo and her friends got together and rejoiced over their safety. So they had a party. Uh... That sounds like more like a nightmare than a dream, but... So yeah, they, they had... I don't think they had anything planned for this. They just kind of make it out that way. Sweet God, if they had made, like, a side game, Choo Choo's Adventures, or Choo Choo Party, or something like that. It's just like, oh no, please no. Choo Choo will go anywhere, even to the end of the world. Yeah, please stop talking like this. You're just strange and very strange. <laughs> all right, so we have a, well, access to all of our characters and we got a whole bunch of money from that uh, situation. I'm very close to back up to where I started. So yeah, definitely want to, well, you have no choice, but you gotta fight all of those uh, battles there. Now, I believe, since, uh, what's her name's not there, let's pass forward here. Um, since Margie is no longer in, uh, the room there, she will be down here. So, we need to head down here. And fast forward through all that. And this is the dock, which should look familiar. Yeah, we now have access to this. And we want to take the elevator. And we want to go and talk to you, because we need to set up new parties. Now, let's take a look here. Uh, go to status. Once those limiters get unlocked, we now have access to all of our abilities. They're still blocked off by certain levels. You need to be a certain level in order to learn some of these. But everyone has access to all of the remaining death blows. And I need to go and work on some of them. Like I mentioned a few episodes back when we were in the, uh, whatever that area is, the, um, oh, the, sh the shaft thing, I don't know, whatever it's called, the, uh, thing we had to go through to get down the elevator when we go went and met up with Dominia and confronted her about Seeds End and destroying the gate and all that. Anyway, this, uh, we will want to use. Learning rate goes up. Basically, give that to slow characters, characters that are further behind. Uh, both Faye and Satan probably won't need them because speed and the fact that they're in the party all the time. Uh, Faye does get two more death blows than anyone else. Uh, just so you know, um, I'm just gonna go over this real quick here. I'm going to do a lot of the, uh, I'm going to do a whole bunch of battling off screen and just kind of learn a bunch of the, the text by fighting, uh, the gimmick enemies in, uh, in whatever that is. I can never remember the name of this stuff, but, uh, yeah, over here, this ladder here, just jump there and pop right in and we're back in here. So there's a save point over there and more fights to be had here. And, of course, I didn't end up fighting on the first go-around, but that, that's fine. Now, if you'll notice, we only have six um, six points there. Six, uh, what, are, what are those? AP, SP, six attacks. Anyway, just do any combination. doesn't really matter at this point. And again, don't leave one of them alive, because that will end up in a lot of pain. So we're going to go and target uh, the other one there. So, yeah. I'm just going to take them down somewhat slowly here, just because I want to uh, build up my attacks there and use different combinations. 
Until there's one left, and then I'm gonna have to use Death Blows to end them quickly. They do dodge a reasonable amount. Yeah, but when they're both there together, they don't do their unification thing, and they don't do a lot of damage. You know, 20, 50 damage. Not a big deal. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna mainly use those types of combinations. Once you get through um, doing, I think it's the first battle, uh, once you've gotten uh, the limiters removed, I think your your points there, your ability points or whatever they are down in the, the bottom left corner, the six of six, I think that goes up to seven. And once it goes up to seven, then you can actually make use of those uh, subsequent death blows. As you can tell, uh, these battles will tend to take a long time when you're attacking like this. Until he does his unification thing, I can still attack him like this. There go. Yeah, once you've gotten through a single battle, though, time to end this guy, I think. Because, yeah, he can do a lot of damage. So let's just uh, finish him off with a death blow so he can do a lot of damage to me. That would be nice. I still have to go over my gear and setup before I actually come in down here to, to do any actual grinding, but we've already learned one. Now, let's uh, go into the menu here. I don't think we can see how many uh, points we have, but uh, you can see we've kind of already learned one. He's learned Will of Wind there, and so we have, as you can see, that requires a total of seven button presses. So I'm assuming we now have access to that. And I think each of the characters has to have an actual battle in order to have access to that, or maybe just one battle and then everyone has access to it. I'm not exactly sure. We'll get into one more battle quickly, which I won't show off, just so we can see the number. And then uh, I will uh, do a whole bunch of, not really leveling, but uh, grinding for you know, abilities and working on them. I'll try and do them in, in as few battles as possible. Be nice if I could find another battle, though. There we go. And these are the guys that you'll best want to fight. And as you can see, we now have seven out of seven. So yeah, I would recommend uh, kind of building toward your other techs by probably using those combos and then other different variations of buttons. Uh, let's see, we have four triangles and an X, which we've already seen. Uh, we also have, uh, let's see two triangles, a square, and an X, and a triangle, a square, a triangle, and an X, and then like, like so, and let's see, the other one is, let's see here, get somebody else's turn going, stop attacking me, and then we have square, triangle, triangle, X, and those are the main ones, Faye does have two additional ones, um, that are trying or yeah, I think try, I can't remember. I think they're X triangle X and uh, square square X. So basically, yeah, he's the only one who gets those two. So yeah, like something like that. But he's the only one who gets them, and he learns those. Uh, one of them at level 70, and the other one at level 80. So he's it's a long way off from getting them. I think I'm only in my early 50s. But anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to do for today. Uh, like I said, I'll be doing a lot of this grinding stuff off screen so that I can get some of these skills for these characters so they can actually use them. And I will also go over the fact that many of them are elemental and how uh, some of them work, which ones are, which ones aren't, because they're not necessarily obvious, especially with Faze, who were never translated. Um, yeah. Hers are kind of obvious, you know, Anemo, Zap, I think is Wind, Terra Charge, Terra meaning Earth, uh, Thermo, uh, which is uh, Fire, and of course Aqua Frost. His are kind of obvious as well, but many of the other characters aren't. They're just, some of them aren't even elemental, even though they sound like they might be. So, anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to go over today, so next time we will get going back toward... That was helpful. We'll get going back toward uh, Nissan, and we'll have some new level ups to work with. And yeah, that's all for this one, and I'll see you guys next time.